The ghoul is a fascinating species. They're both monsters and a people. As such, they have a biological makeup that is familiar yet different than our own. This makes them a hotbed of debate for what they need to survive and what they can do when their body is stressed. Do ghouls undergo hibernation? In a nutshell, the ghoul hibernation theory is more or less in the name, that a ghoul enters an incredibly low state of energy expenditure to survive harsh conditions, a period of dormancy that can last well over 200 years. It's pretty simple and it's a theory that many people have individually created. I've even received an email back in December of last year from someone who came to this idea on their own. At least that's how it's worded. Based on so many minds independently drawing up a similar conclusion, it's certainly something that could make sense to a lot of people as a method to cover potential plot holes and lore inconsistencies surrounding the needs of ghouls. There's a few variations of this theory, but all work similarly. I'll name two of the ones that I have found. Coffin effect, dormancy happens when a ghoul is put in an enclosed, cramped environment, and starvation survival, dormancy happens when a ghoul has not eaten for a long period of time. In addition, some suggest that they're technically dead and don't need food, water, or air to survive. If a ghoul goes dormant, they're doing so to pass time. So, in this video, I'll discuss dormancy in real life, the various ghoul examples that people point to, I'll examine some of these examples and see how they relate to real life dormancy, as well as grading the theory. So you may have noticed I've been saying dormancy rather than hibernation up until now, except when speaking about the name of the theory. That's because there's different types of dormancy states, not just hibernation, used by many species, which I'll go over now. Do note that I am simplifying and there are exceptions. There's hibernation, brumation, and estivation. Hibernation is mostly by warm-blooded animals such as bears, groundhogs, and hedgehogs. Brumation is a hibernation of cold-blooded animals such as tortoises, snakes, and lizards. They both serve the same purpose. Animals slow down during the winter months. Estivation is more or less the summer alternative to brumation, as it's mostly performed by cold blood animals and used to prevent water loss due to high temperature. Now, I know that people use hibernation as a simplified, easily understood term, but I did want to make this distinction. All three dormancy states are marked by long periods of vitals being repressed. Body temperature is regulated and their metabolic, breathing, and heart rates are slowed down. This is all to conserve energy and wait out harsh conditions. These harsh conditions can induce dormancy and may include temperature change, cold weather for brumation hibernation, and hot weather for estivation. A lack of available food, water, and oxygen can also induce dormancy. Brumation and hibernation are very similar, but there's also key differences. Hibernating animals will stay knocked out for their entire hibernating period. Brumation is a bit different, where there are periods of activity between rest. They'll use these active periods to drink water, which they need during brumation. Hibernating animals, however, can survive on what they store in their bodies. In addition, animals that undergo brumation require a lot less oxygen than those that hibernate. While it may seem a bit silly to look at how a fictional race of mutant humans could compare to real life, I did want to note real forms of dormancy as a bit of a basis when discussing the goal hibernation theory. Now, let's move on to examples. Let's start out with the two most popular subjects when discussing if ghouls hibernate, Coffin Willie and Billy. Both of these subjects were in small, confined spaces and survived incredibly long periods without food, water, and oxygen. Coffin Willie was put into, just as the name implies, a coffin and buried in Golgotha. He claimed to have survived in his coffin for months. Notably, Fallout 2 has a timer of 13 years before the game ends, meaning that Coffin Willie has survived in a range of 2 months to 156 months before the player can find them. We're not certain of the length of time, but it's definitely longer than a normal human would be able to survive. On to Billy, the kid in the fridge. Billy is a pre-war ghoul who survived in a fridge for over 200 years after the Great War occurred. Some people have theorized that Billy is a post-war ghoul and he may be referring to the Battle of Quincy. But that's very unlikely, and I have covered that in another Theory Study video. Be sure to check that out after this one. There's also other ghouls that may be showing signs of hibernation. You'll often find sleeping ghouls throughout Fallout 4 and 76. In Fallout 2, there's Woody, a ghoul that will fall asleep for long periods of time at seemingly random intervals. So much to the point that some con men caught him, wrapped him up in toilet paper, put him in a coffin, and claimed that he was a mummy so people would pay to see him. I do want to acknowledge that Woody and these feral ghouls might also be legitimately sleeping and not just assume they're undergoing dormancy. That said, there's examples of ghouls, largely feral, being trapped with no way to get food yet surviving by the time they're found by the player. 
Examples include the Little Yangtze Ghouls and Old War Blues, and it's very unlikely they are being fed by the Think Tank or any automation they may control. Fallout 3 has Mr. Keller, a glowing one locked away 200 years in a bunker, and looking around, there's a few open cans, some food on the shelves, and a few corpses that the ghoulified Mr. Keller could have eaten. However, it's unlikely to last him 200 years. Glowing one biology may keep them alive due to their constant radiation, but that's just a guess with no basis. Fallout 4 has John Elwood, a pre-war man, who became a ghoul while being locked in his office and went feral. People also like to point out Eddie Winter, as he was locked up in a bunker, but it was his own personal bunker and theoretically could have a large stockpile of food that we don't see. He certainly doesn't look like he's starving anyways. That being said, it's a tiny room. It's possible he could have secret compartments with food stored, but I don't know, it seems a bit far-fetched. So looking at these examples, I've seen some theorize that they're technically dead and don't need to eat or breathe in the first place. But I feel that's a bit of a stretch. Sure, they don't give off body heat according to Margot. My equipment indicates the persons possess no internal body heat and are emitting lethal levels of radiation. However, they do require to drink water, according to one of the original Fallout's possible endings for Necropolis. The ghouls of Necropolis learn firsthand the final meaning of dehydration as their city succumbs to the desert sands and the water runs out. Without their water purifying control chip, they do not survive. And they do have brain functionality. A number of people suggest that ghouls that eat merely do so out of habit. I still need to eat. At least I think I do. But I'm not sure I agree. Harlan claims to do his business in a quarter, which suggests that his body is actively digesting food and water and producing waste. Furthermore, feral ghouls, the ghouls with no humanity left, have been shown to eat. While one could argue that's a psychological need, I still think that's attempting to dismiss evidence in favor of accepting a preconceived belief. Besides, they're ghouls, they're named after a mythical creature that is known for the consumption of human flesh. And that's something that ghouls of Fallout eat as well. Can't even find them in their inventory. Sure, ghouls are also based off of zombies, but the more modern interpretation of The Walking Dead has zombies attacking people due to a virus or parasite forcing their deceased host to spread the infection and create more zombies. Which isn't a thing in Fallout you don't become a ghoul by getting bit. We could talk a fair bit about ghoul inspiration and the overlaps of real folklore and how zombies fit into the equation, but I feel that's a lengthy subject that could be saved for a different video, if you're interested. Nevertheless, I feel there's too much going on with ghouls, feral or non-feral, to suggest that they're technically dead and don't actually need food. What about the coffin effect? Well, a lack of oxygen is one of the possible stressors that could cause an animal to undergo dormancy, and would explain Billy and Willie's situation, and thus put the coffin effect into place. However, that does not explain the other surviving ghouls we see. Woody, while also in a coffin when found in Fallout 2, has been constantly falling asleep before being teepeed. The pharaohs we find sleeping throughout the modern games and the various living, isolated ghouls cannot really be explained by a lack of oxygen inducing dormancy. They can, however, be explained with starvation doing so. Even Woody might be starving during the various times he passes out. Woody is from a civilized area, but if he can't afford to eat, he's going to run into problems. This would cover a lot. Bullet, a gunner, claims that ghouls don't need to eat, and he's justified by Billy's 200 year survival, even if he's just a dumb mercenary that many people dismiss. Dr. Amari, however, had to put safety features in the memory pod that Kent, a ghoul, uses so he doesn't starve himself to death. Under the theory that starvation induces dormancy, both can be correct in some way. They can survive long periods by shutting down, but need to eat. Otherwise, they enter the state of low energy expenditure. So are these ghouls hibernating? Well, maybe not true hibernation, but they do seem to be showing some extreme forms of dormancy. Hibernation is true sleep, rumination isn't. Rumination is characterized by bouts of activity and falling back to sleep, as well as requiring lower levels of oxygen. However, hibernation allows a creature to retain water for longer periods of time. Ghouls might share a little bit of both, rumination and hibernation. Now to be clear, I'm not saying that ghouls are related to lizards by any means. They were once human, a mammal. But rumination would allow ghouls to survive in a buried coffin due to the incredibly low levels of oxygen they need. Hibernation will allow them to retain water. Regardless, ghoul dormancy under this theory is definitely its own beast, especially surviving well over 200 years, even more so when they don't store anything prior to going into these states. In addition, it appears that dormant ghouls seem to be easily stimulated out of dormancy just by walking near them. Someone there? I can hear you. Get me out of this thing. Which is different from a real life animal. 
There's not much evidence against this theory. The biggest one is definitely the dehydration ending for Necropolis, but that's countered by our favorite coffin cohorts. That said, I found one thing in Fallout 4 that does kind of raise a few eyebrows. In the National Guard Recruitment Office, you can find a few sleeping ghouls among the dead ghouls, despite the fact there's a delicious, nummy nummy human in the corner, as well as a buffet of their fallen brothers, which they have also been seen eating. It's noteworthy, but these ghouls could be setting up another ambush, though that might not be necessary given there's already a feast everywhere, or they're just, you know, sleeping like regular living things do. So I'm going to give this one a high mark, very likely with an asterisk. It's not confirmed by a game or a dev, but it's really close and would just need one line in a future game to canonize it. Now I don't think Black Isle, Bethesda, or Obsidian has ever really given it much of a thought, but still, it's really the only thing that makes any kind of sense. If starvation, thirst, and a lack of oxygen is what causes dormancy, then all camps are justified. So under this theory, yes, ghouls need to eat, yes, they need a drink, and yes, they need to breathe. However, they can live stupidly long periods without doing so by entering a dormant state. They're kind of the ultimate survivor. Maybe set our first look at a ghoul's face in the original Fallout at a point. The future. Survival anywhere. We surpass the norms.